As I whisk down the short pleated marble tiled stairs, I carefully step. Careful not to interrupt the conversations of those elder. Sorry. I step, head held low, I step ever so carefully. I enter the cold kitchen void, barefoot and alone. I step, step ever so eerily, ever so frailly, ever so frightfully, I step. I open the fridge to be welcomed by a certain burst of cool air, only to be startled by the sounds of my cousins walking, arms interlocked, their laughter rings in my ears. The older one peers over my shoulder and mumbles, hmm, seems like there isn't much to eat. Abigail, would you mind cooking me up something? At a simple inquiry, I sharply reply, why would I ever do that for you? But only in my head, and calmly ponder, why don't you try making a turkey sandwich on your own for once? At, a simple at this simple inquiry, he sharply replies, why would I ever do that for you? I mean, he sharply replies, oh, I thought it would just be poor practice for you for when you become a housewife someday, and slaps the hand of his brother with a grin only to leave the mark of his slap, stinging my face, scarring me in rage. My face tainted by the humiliating scar now swelling, I reply. The act of describing me by my appearance is not unheard of, but in fact is the absence of love. Your words taint me in the aspects of determined old judge. Be shameful if you don't adhere to me, otherwise I promise to hold a grudge. As you may or may not know, my name means the presence of light. So let me shine my light in the path of your fright. You fear I will outdo you, outshine you in the work you hold dear. We fear the same judgment by the elders sat near. This prejudicial judgment is a game we all play, at home, at school, in the littlest of ways. Take the benefit of my doubt, but may I ask you, exactly how many have you classified into your own verdict today? Maybe one or two? Three, four, oh, you can continue to count more? What about that girl you showed no interest in four? Five, six continues the list of more and more names of people you've dissed. You call me weak and frail because I am small. Maybe my frame isn't the size of my African sister's natural size and call. I may not be built the same as the rest. No prolonged loud tones or decupped chest. It isn't these remarks that I have to progress, but the labels we have on those who wish to be their own person, nothing less. Those who influence us to do good stop us short from our dreams. Have they themselves experienced this, it seems? All young men, no woman to look up to. No woman to be accredited in academics or virtue. The question of fear nibbles in the back of my head as a pest. Will I be the first to fail amongst the rest? And if so, I think, what will my fate be? Will I turn out to be a mother of three? Will I turn out to be just what my cousin said to me? For a second, I calm down. Eyes forward, I stare into the eyes of he. He that mocked me, insulted me, shook my already shaken me. I see on his face planted a sly grin smug, knowing that these words I think of must never escape my tongue, hanging the dreams of them ever being sung. For you see, the ending always stays the same. A woman must never talk back unless she is insane. And whenever time comes to speak of her doubt, she's shut down, blown out, misjudged and told off for heading down the wrong route. And although we think of it as just a game, Mart Maya Angelou also spoke out that we are the same. We deserve not to be justified by an unjustified statement, but to be justified on the way that we pave our pavements. So as a student, I stand here and ponder, what have we reduced ourselves to, I wonder. And although I know I may never be able to speak out again on this cause, I ask you to pause before judging on flaws.